Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mainly True Nerd, and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite, where, against all odds of my own expectations, I have made it to Monument Island itself, and I think, I think actually, this is a relatively quiet point, I think actually there's no fighting inside Monument Island, again, I can't remember for certain, it's been a flipping while since I've played this game, but I think it's mainly just story stuff going on in here. Now here's a quick thing I did want to go over. So here we are, and this is this is the siphon. Sorry, um, slight spoiler warning. If you've not played this game, maybe just, just skip forward a couple of minutes. If you have played this game, I, I want an answer on this question. So this is the siphon. This is the thing that basically leeches loads of energy out of Elizabeth, because otherwise she's too powerful. And later in the game, and uh, not too far in the future, she says that when she was a little girl, she had a lot more power over the doors and windows that she could open in the air. That's what she says. And then, uh, of course, she can't do it anymore, because this thing was installed to leech energy from her. But then, this chart says how much power she could produce. And it clearly shows, just like she says, when she was a little girl, she had loads of power. And then she could kind of do these things. And she got more and more powerful. I don't know why this particular age was more powerful. But it spiked. It spiked here. And then they installed the siphon. And her power level went right down again. But as you can see, since then, her power level's back up to beyond its previous peak. So why is Elizabeth saying she used to have more control over the doors than now? When you can clearly see here, she is currently as or slightly more powerful than she's ever been at any point in her life. Just, just something that annoyed me. Just something that always annoys me. This, this chart that that uh, that it clearly shows that she ought to be more powerful than she's ever been, but she says that she remembers having more control than she does now. Ah, here we are. The 168 uh, hour quarantine. Lovely. So now here we are inside that uh, inside that giant angel statue, Monument Island that we saw earlier, and it's time to meet Elizabeth, or rather not, but rather we get to spy in on. Uh, on her and her various activities. We can kind of see what's going on there. We can see she's got some very nice digs going on in here, but a prison regardless. Go to here, and this is an odd moment in the game. Activate the specimen tracker. Dressing room. That's where we need to go. Booker DeWitt, a man who learns that a woman is in her dressing room and immediately says, yep, that's where I need to go. Well done, Booker DeWitt. You're ever so slightly creepy. The specimen is present in her dressing room, just as said. Open the door to, or up the kind of the, the blast door, I guess. That's her. And you can see Elizabeth is, uh... One, we immediately get her little musical motif. Which is, uh, which is kind of cool. Always good to have a musical motif when a character's introduced. And we see straight away she's got a bit of a fascination with Paris that will come up again in a second. As she, uh, skips on her way. In what is supposed to be the dining room, we see she's actually using it for uh, for painting, and she's uh, quite the artist. And the reason she can paint the Eiffel Tower is because she can sort of open a hole to it. And you can also see there, of course, she's opened a tower to uh, Paris. She's opened a portal to Paris in the 1980s because that was uh, the French Return of the Jedi there. And open up another window, and we can see she is in a massive, great library. I've always wondered, actually, if um, if her design was supposed to be slightly reminiscent of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, insofar as her her hair and the way she dresses, the combination of white and blue, and the fact that she's she's imprisoned, but she's imprisoned in this very nice prison where she has her own personal massive library. Uh, I've always wondered if there was supposed to be a deliberate uh, a deliberate echo there. I've never been sure. Anyway, head on our way. We still can't get to her. And head through the door, and we head mysteriously into extremely high winds, which is really odd, because obviously we've been in the skies above the clouds or at cloud level for the whole game, and the conditions have been quite pleasant. And you can see we're not exactly much higher than some of the rest of the city. There's kind of parts of the city over there that look about the same altitude as we're currently at, but apparently all of a sudden there's incredibly strong crosswinds, and yeah, you can see there we're at the... Uh, the side of the uh, the side of the uh, winged figure's head there, which is kind of cool. We're kind of climbing up the shoulder and up the side of the face. And obviously, I love this little bit here. Obviously, we've got an empty room, but with a green door, a door with a green light bulb. So obviously, you kind of game game makes you want to think you're just going to walk straight across. But no, nope. unfortunately, the ceiling collapses. I love Elizabeth. I love Elizabeth and Book's initial meeting where she just starts pelting him with books. 
you, gotta go. Meanwhile, of course, we've got another wonderful character being introduced here. Songbird. I love Songbird. What about this? What about it? This is the way out, isn't it? Where are you? Give it to me. And that's... That I didn't realise this the first time I saw the game. That was in the chest that um, you were given on the boat on your way to the lighthouse in the first place. That was presented to you. But obviously, uh, something's not quite right here. Songbird is not happy. And Songbird gets a brilliant introduction too. Elizabeth gets a fantastic introduction. Songbird gets a fantastic introduction too. Because obviously, technically this is all... Really, this is a cutscene. What you're about to see is, a, is just a cutscene. Because there's no real gameplay. There's no real choice. There's no real way to lose. You're literally just running down a corridor. But... We'll it's done that. very, very nicely. It feels interactive. It, it feels like you're, uh, it feels like you're under threat. Maybe that's partly because you've got Elizabeth right in front of you and she's clearly terrified, so it kind of gets you in the mood for being a little bit scared. The massive great uh, claws tearing apart the building, that certainly helps too. Now that, this is another bit I love. The game now gives you your guns and your powers back. Which always, to me, made me kind of feel like... Obviously, that's the game implying you're about to be in combat. You're not about to be in combat. There's no combat this whole section. The game does not need to give you your powers or your gun back now. It only does it to make you feel nervous and like you're about to be under attack. But you're not. You're not actually about to be under attack at all. This whole thing's effectively just completely a cutscene. But it's lovely that the game gives you your weapons. Because then it feels like you're under threat. You feel like you're going to need them. Also, uh, sorry, I talked over that bit there, but Elizabeth um, suggested some level of... Oi, get out of here. Boo. Go away. Boo. Elizabeth suggested some level of surprise there as to why she'd be kept locked in a tower. <laughs> I would have thought the obvious thing to reply to that is, you can make portals to any point in time and space. Not many people can do that. It's kind of rare, actually. Now, just uh, hop on down here. And we are back outside with Elizabeth, heading upwards. And, oh... Songbird just kind of emerging out of the clouds around you. It's just brilliantly done. It's a great introduction to Elizabeth. It's a great introduction to Songbird. It's genuinely fantastic. And unfortunately, this is the point where uh, everyone falls off everything. So this arguably is the point where maybe the game slightly loses focus because uh, you basically just go around on a sky rail and you don't have much control over what's going on really. I mean, you're really just supposed to watch the... Uh, the angel statue being absolutely torn apart, the head's been torn apart, and the whole thing's falling apart. Which is another thing I find quite weird, because, um, again, sorry, slight like spoiler warning. At the end of the game, of course, you destroy this facility, because it's got the siphon inside it to give Elizabeth her powers back, but it kind of looks pretty destroyed to me already. It looks pretty well destroyed already. And off we fall. But luckily not off the side of the city, luckily into something much softer. You can see water, but not water in the ocean below. Instead, we wake up mysteriously on a uh, on a beach. Interestingly, uh, we wake up on a beach, badly injured. You probably notice, uh, but uh, we're in kind of the little holiday resort of Colombia. This is like an artificial beach, and interestingly, an artificial sea. It says elsewhere. I think it's in one of the um, the Vox phones. You say this is actually just a series of uh, rain catchers and pumps. So basically, this uh, this whole city catches the rain and uses it to create the sea. But you see later, there's a huge amount of water just pouring off the side of the city. Um, so I very much doubt, given we're clearly above a large part of the cloud line, that we'd be uh, catching enough rain to maintain this sort of level of body, uh, this body of water when we're clearly uh, jetting most of it all the time. But never mind. Uh, so we're in this beach anyway. And uh, mainly okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly uh, go and ransack house, everything because you can find eyes. enough food around here just to uh, get your health uh, back up to full, pretty much. So I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to join Elizabeth, who's uh, just a little bit elsewhere on the beach. And um, when you've got enough of your health back, just go through to the pier in the second bit of beach, and you'll find Elizabeth here, who cannot be distracted from her dancing, so instead must uh, miss. Miss. <laughs> must be yell at a little bit. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, come dance with me, Mr. Dwayne. I don't dance. Come on, let's go. Why? What could be better than this? Here we have Mr. DeWitt being an utter bastard. Paris. Paris? I don't understand how could Of course, he knows that she's excited by Paris from seeing her drawing the Eiffel Tower earlier. So he's going to lie to her and say that that airship's going to Paris, even though he knows full well it isn't. He's just trying to steal it for himself to take her back to New York. Oh, Booker DeWitt, he's, he's pleasingly a complete bastard. 
Lots of characters are just like, you know, oh, they, they mean the right thing, really. They're, you know, they're really decent people underneath it all. Just, but, uh, you know, they're just an, a little bit anti-heroes. But Booker DeWitt is... He's a really nasty piece of work. He's a, he's a really mean, horrible liar. But I do like... I just love... I love Booker and Elizabeth's relationship. I mean, partly the thing why I love it is because she's so busy just being excited about being free and he's just such a misery guts. There's not really ever any real time for them to get into being in any way interested in each other romantically. There's just not that subtext to me. They're just kind of two completely different people. They're just kind of wanting different things. But yes, let's uh, crack on and just... Uh, not much happens for a little while. Elizabeth's we've got a little bit of exposition going on. Nothing too much. One thing potentially worth noting while you're in the slightly creepy uh, puppet shop. If you go up into the employees only section, you'll see that the owner of the shop has mysteriously been whining and dining a small doll. Which is kind of weird. And we've got these two again, this time offering Elizabeth a choice between two brooches, but it makes no difference whatsoever which you choose. It makes literally no difference. I'm not sure anyone has found any difference that it makes. Uh, and it's kind of a story point that it makes literally no difference. I normally go for the bird, because Elizabeth's just escaped from a cage, so it's kind of a bit weird to, to go for the cage, I think. I almost always go for the bird, but it makes literally no difference. It's purely an aesthetic difference. Though she will be wearing that for the rest of the game now. She'll always have that on her. So it's a little, there's a little bit going on there. And then a very strange thing happened, which is all of a sudden, everyone goes, oh my goodness, look at the smoking ruins of the angel statue. When, you know, that, that was broken ages ago. It was broken by Songbird on what was a relatively clear day at the time. I mean, and then I fell off um, the thing and, and half drowned and needed to rest on the beach for a while. Everyone would have already seen this. There's no way this was news. The game kind of covers it up by saying, oh yeah, the sun was kind of behind it, so no one saw it. People would have seen this. It's it's belching black smoke. People would have seen that. But uh, never mind, it's, it's a rather kind of weird moment in the game, that. It's, <laughs> this woman's been temporarily distracted by the destruction of her religion, her religious icon, so we're just going to rob her quickly. Ooh, banana. And once you're done ransacking, you can just head up into the arcade. Uh, rather, you'll reach a police line, and we'll be introduced to another one of Elizabeth's rather useful little powers, which is that Elizabeth can lockpick. Or, well, kind of. Elizabeth can do certain lockpicks. Generally, she will require you to find lockpicks for her to use. But I like this. I like this as a thing, so obviously it makes Elizabeth more useful. I think it makes you like her a lot more. Um... I think it makes you like it a lot more, because rather than you just doing... It makes you feel like she's contributing something. She, you're not just kind of protecting her. It feels like you're a partnership, because she's actually giving you something. She's helping you with lock doors you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Of course, the game could have done it just easily the other way, because you're the one that gathers lockpicks, and very easily the game could have said, oh yeah, you just do the lockpicking by yourself. But it's nice that they gave that power to her, though you find lockpicks. You technically don't unlock it yourself. You tell her to do it. So, I don't know. I think it's a nice touch. I think it's a nice touch that the game does that. And that, Elizabeth's giving us money for the first time. She can find a lot of money, interestingly. Um, I don't know, I think the game's supposed to be. She's actually going around finding money that is lying around, and she gives it to you, she gathers it up for you. But sometimes she has such a large amount of money on her, it's almost kind of weird. And if we keep going through here into the back area, we will find, almost immediately, rather conveniently, some gear. Let's see if we've got gear, because I say, gear can make this game. What have we got? Pyromate, wait, hang on, when struck... When, oh, when struck, 50% chance to burn near enemies. Victims take 400 damage. Okay, so now if we're hit, we are also we can also kind of cause people to explode. Okay, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot. we now cause a lot of fires. If we punch someone, they're very likely to burst into flame. If we get punched, they're very likely to burst into flame. Basically, we're just kind of, yeah, we are just a bloke who seems to be on fire. But uh, that is good stuff. And we'll get another piece of kit just in a second too. Because round here, if you chose to be nice to the two people in the raffle at the the game, sorry, I cut that bit out, then uh, they give you a piece of uh, they give you a piece of gear too. I think that's not there unless you've. Uh, I think that's not there. Otherwise, so gear, what have we got? Ooh, oh, it's almost identical to the thing I've just had. So hang on, it's so I can either when struck, fifty percent chance to burn near enemies, four hundred damage over three seconds. Or, when struck, 50% chance to shock nearby enemies. Victims take 50 damage, vulnerable for 2 seconds. No, I'd much rather have the... I'd rather, much rather take the... Uh, I'd much rather take the burn then. So, that's not so good, given I just found something very similar. Right. 
out and we are into the arcade itself. Not so much here, but again, just some looting to be done. Uh, there's some fun lore to be had here because kind of the thing is about the arcade. Uh, it's not really an arcade in the sense that we would understand it. It's much more, they're like little puppet shows where there's these two characters, uh, Duke there and Dimwit. So basically, yes, you kind of, uh, you have this obviously white blonde haired character who does everything right and the dark skinned character who's a bit of an idiot. So yes, uh, it, it's just a kind of nice little insight into the, into the city. It's a nice way of doing uh, storytelling, I think. Anyway, there's not too much to be done in here, so you can just kind of head on your way. Bit of foreshadowing here with the uh, motorized patriot, therefore, the, uh, the robot version of Abraham Washington there. So uh, I'm sure we will get onto him later. And instead, as we head towards the uh, the gondola station that can take us to the airship we're looking to steal, we finally get to, uh... Annabelle? Excuse me? Annabelle, it's me, Esther. Oh, no, I'm not Annabelle. Are you sure? My name is Elizabeth. Do I know you? Elizabeth? Isn't that a lovely name? <laughs> that was... odd. That was indeed odd, but let's go inside and see if there's nice any customer. more odd stuff Box going on. Closing. So go up into the ticket office and then just go up to this hot dog stand and this conversation happens. Have you got sauerkraut? Sauerkraut? Uh, I guess so. I'll take, um, <sighs> one, please. How much? Um, one silver eagle. <laughs> All right. Notice how neither of them seem to really know much about what they want or what hot dogs they've got or how much it costs or actually have any hot dogs or actually uh, do the exchange they've just been talking about, uh, which is again just a little bit uh, little bit suspicious. And uh, the reason it's like this is because you're walking into an ambush actually, you'll, uh, there's a Vox phone that kind of uh, establishes it a little bit later on, which is basically saying that uh, what you've got right here is, ooh, free stuff. These people have been specifically, they're kind of the elite trained forces designed to take out the false shepherd and recapture Elizabeth. And they've been sent here uh, basically to guard one of the ways that would be out of the city. So in a minute, they're all going to turn on me. And some of them are much more dangerous than others. I'm pretty sure which one is it. One of these guys is going to have a shotgun. That's a problem, obviously, uh, because it's the first shotgun in the game and it can knacker you incredibly quickly. Not least, it's obviously, you can probably see there's not a huge amount of space for you to kind of uh, get get into a good defensive position here. It's uh, it's not great. I mean, it's this guy. One of them is going to have a shotgun. If I can identify the guy with a shotgun, I'm going to want to get a possession on him as soon as possible. That's going to be the key thing. Anyway, we're going to speak to this guy and he's clearly going to be talking to the authorities Excuse about me. how he's almost captured us. We'll then have the option to either point a gun at him or just quietly accept uh, or just wait for him to be done. Yeah, if you wait for him to be done, he will stab yeah. you through the hand and you will be injured for the rest of the game, albeit only superficially. So instead, uh, you can hold him up and you won't be, so I'm just going to do that because I don't really want to be stabbed through the hand, quite frankly. I don't like this. Draw weapon. Draw weapon. And then, as you can see, we immediately have a problem. Okay, go go for the man with the shotgun. Go for the man with the shotgun. Oh, blimey. And he's already almost knackered me. Oh, you see, that shotgun knackers you. It's just a flipping nightmare. And I'm going to be down to half health in a crowded room. Where am I going to be in the room? Get a possession off on someone. Whatever happens, just get a... You, you're mine. You're going to be mine now. She'll she'll draw fire from someone. Okay, there's a, there was a health kit here. Yes. Now, is anyone... Oh, wait, what the... Get away from me. What just happened? Let me out. Elizabeth! I want... Stay away from me! Uh-oh, uh-oh. And a uh, shotgun. Go for the shotgun. I think in a minute, more reinforcements are going to come in. And yes, oh, there we go. We got a shotgun in there. Okay, more shotgunning, more shotgunning. Is there going to be more people? Oh, there's more people. There's more people. Where are the people? Oh, did we just get both of them? Oh, we just did it. Okay, only one death. Ooh, okay, I think what we just saw there was my new shirt having an impact. Uh, 
on the fight there. My new shirt having a nice impact on the fight. Mag flipping nificent. Good, good, good. That was lucky. Right, what have we got? So, um, that's the shotgun. The shotgun in this game is brilliant. I love the shotgun. But uh, what do we have here? Let's get our salt back up. Still not enough for that, though. Yeah, this was the guy I was actually thinking of. He runs in later. So that was the guy I was actually thinking of who has the uh, who has the shotgun. But uh, never mind. We will uh, do that. This question is, is it going to be... Have I not feeling someone else is going to attack me yet? So I'm just going to keep my shotgun out for the minute. There's a... Yes! Okay, I thought so. And in this room, you can find confirmation that these guys were supposedly elite forces specifically tasked with uh, dealing with the uh, the false shepherdess in this voxophone right here. I'm going to keep the shotgun out because the shotgun is just... It's just a brilliant weapon in this game. I think everyone's now dead. Uh, I think also she avoided capture. I always assumed she was kind of like grabbed by someone. But actually, she just um, squeezes through the bars and runs ahead. Which is fine. You can run straight after her. Don't do that because there's some good loot to be had. Uh, most importantly of all, we have some ammo. And But yes, hugely importantly, you, I'm sure you can see there. There is a small health kit. Pretty useful. And an infusion. Now, do I want to keep going shield? or actually, I'm going to go for the first salts infusion. I'm going to go for the first salts infusion. Not least is it's nice. a free top up. It's a free top up of, uh, of salts too. Which is, uh, that is useful. That is very, very useful. So, that's searching done. You can just head... Actually, is there more here? Yes, okay. Oh, yes, I remember this. There's some There's some good stuff through here if you go down this way into this um, strangely purple room. Strangely purple room. But go down here, and perhaps most importantly of all, you can find... Uh, you, have, oh, you can find two wallets, which is worth a lot of money. Especially if, obviously, as I just did, you just died. And a cash bag. And a purse. And another purse. For some reason, they, they seem to store money down here. So I'm back up to 400, which is great. You run to Elizabeth again at the cable car that takes you up to Soldier's Field, which is the way to get to the uh, the Lady Airship we're trying to get to, including one of the most... I don't know if they did this intentionally, if this was just a terrible error. And by the way, there's your confirmation that uh, water to Battleship Bay just falls off into the sky. Um, apparently they can just keep... They can keep... Even though they're, they're just throwing this much water away constantly... They can, uh, apparently they can just, you know, keep uh, keep that ocean full. But yes, the most baffling thing in the game happens here, which is, I don't know how they missed this or if they did it intentionally, but you get to the, you get to the uh, place and you hear this. <laughs> which I present without comment. How on earth did no one while playtesting say, yeah, this is, it, it does sound a little bit dodgy. They must have known, this must be a joke. Because she's uh, she is trying to get this lever pulled and not having much luck. But yes, we can do that for her. And Elizabeth pleasingly is slightly upset by the fact that you murdered a load of people. And sure, they were trying to murder you, but she's just not keen on murder, which makes a lot of sense. So often in games, characters are a little bit um, just a little bit numb to killing. You know, your character can just go through an enemy complex, killing twenty people, and you'll you'll rescue someone. And they'll be like, oh, thank goodness, I'll come with you, rather than my goodness, you appear to be an utter Madman psychopath. What do they want from me? I don't know. Booker says he doesn't know what they want from her, but he did pass by equipment earlier that suggested that they are leeching huge amounts of power from her. So a reasonable guess would be he could at least tell her, by the way, they are using you as a power source. So, uh, you know, it might be that, just so you know. And then you get here to Soldier's Field. After you've kind of had a little bit of loot around, just head inside. And as we enter... Quite possibly the most American thing I've ever seen in my life. These uh, these eagle-themed battleships and this uh, massive eagle doing little song and dance routine. Uh, <laughs> blimey heck! You know what? I think we'll leave it there uh, for now. I know this is kind of been a bit of a plot-heavy part. But I think some interesting plot bits to discuss in this part. And that fight against the first guy with the shotgun uh, is uh, is not easy. So uh, yes, we will pick up Soldier's Field next time and uh yeah okay we're not dead we're, we're doing much better than i expected so uh yeah we will crack on next time and see what comes next and in the meantime i've been john this has been many a true nerd and this has been even more Barsha elizabeth really wants to see that eagle this has been bioshock infinite thank you very much and goodbye and once he's nice and high caden if you'd be so kind and off he goes into space Oh, you exploded. That's a shame. 
yeah, you're going straight in. I don't. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a good one. Sloop. Thank you.